Hey everyone, welcome back to Electrology. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of generator differential protection. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp of this crucial protection mechanism. Back in the day, we needed separate relays for every type of protection. But thanks to advancements in technology, one numerical relay can now handle it all. So, let's get into it. The logic behind generator differential protection is very simple. It simply relies on the current balance principle. This means the incoming and outgoing current of a path should be the same. As long as this condition fulfills the relay will not operate. But whenever there is a fault in the winding the balance will be disturbed and the relay will operate. To understand deeply, we need to understand the connections inside the generator. To measure the incoming and outgoing current of each winding, CTs are connected to both the neutral side and the outgoing terminal side of each phase of the stator winding. For a 200 megawatt generator, approx 9000 to 10,000 amperes flows through each phase. However, the relay is not designed to handle these high currents. These CTs will drop the value and send the current to the generator protection relay. Now, the relay has the information about the currents flowing through each phase. To understand easier, we will consider any one phase because the concept is the same for each phase. And if we consider three phases at a time, the circuit will be complex and it will be difficult to understand what is going on. So let's move forward step by step. In a family, each member has a different responsibility. Similarly, in generator protection, Every protection has a different area of protection. The differential protection only deals with the internal faults of stator winding. For any faults outside this zone, the relay will not act. Now, how this relay will detect any internal fault? To detect this fault, an overcurrent relay is connected parallel with both the CTs. In normal conditions, the load is connected to the generator and current flows through the stator winding. In this case, both the CTs will sense the same current and deliver current through their secondary winding according to their ratio. Name these currents as I1 and I2. The direction of both currents will also be the same. Look at the relay. Only the difference of these secondary currents will flow through the operating coil of this relay. The difference between I1 and I2 is called differential current. This differential current is sent to the differential relay to detect any internal fault of the stator winding where the relay is set at a value of 0.5 ampere. The differential relay will send a command to the generator lockout relay to trip the generator in case of any fault. Now let's understand how the electromechanical differential relay works. For a 200 megawatt generator, the CT ratio will be 10,000 by 5 ampere. Let us consider 5,000 ampere current flowing through the stator winding to the load. For that reason, 2.5 ampere current will flow through the secondary winding of each CT. In that case, the differential current will be 0 ampere, which is less than the set value of 0.5 ampere. This 0 ampere will not be able to activate the electromagnet and can't be able to attract the plunger. The spring is designed in such a manner but if 0.5 amperes will flow through the electromagnet, only then will it attract the plunger and make the trip contact. As long as fault not occurred, the trip contact will not be made. But when a fault occurs, the neutral side CT will sense more current as load current and fault current will flow through this. However, the terminal side CT will sense less current than the neutral side CT. This will cause an unbalance in the relay circuit and differential current will be more than 0.5 ampere, which will cause the electromagnet to attract the plunger and make the trip circuit. For any fault outside this zone, both the CTs will sense the same current and oppose each other. So, the relay should not operate, but practically the relay may operate for any outzone fault because it is impossible to get exactly identical CT. There must be some small mismatch in ratio error, phase angle error and saturation. Also, the wiring resistance will not be the same. These mismatches will not disturb any internal fault because there will be a huge difference in both the CT's current. But in case of any outzone fault, a huge current will flow through the stator winding. In that case, 
both CTs will sense the same current. However, due to their mismatches, the differential current will flow through the operating coil and may make the trip contact. Let's take an example. The percentage of mismatch between two CTs is 2%. For a maximum load current of 10 kA, how much current flows through the operating coil? To get the value, we will multiply the load current of 10 kA to the CT ratio that is 5 by 1000 and 2 by 100 to get the 2% value and the value will be 0.1 amperes, which is less than the set value of 0.5 amperes. Let's consider that the fault current is 80 kilo ampere, so the value of the differential current will be 0.8 ampere, which can cause the differential relay to make the trip contact. But we need differential relay only for internal faults. For external faults, there are dedicated relays. Their logic is also different. If differential relay will judge for that kind of fault, it will make mistakes. So we need to do something that the differential relay only acts for internal faults, not for external faults. In normal conditions, the preset value of 0.5 ampere is correct. But in case of any fault, we need to increase the preset value. Otherwise, the relay will act in case of any external fault. For any internal fault, the differential current will always be much higher than the value of 0.5. To solve this problem, protection engineers introduced the concept of restraining coil. Now we have two types of coil. Operating coil and restraining coil. Here the concept of biased and percentage differential protection comes in. To prevent tripping from any external faults, the relay will increase the set value with the increase of stator current. For example, if the stator current is 10 kA, then the setting will be 0.5 amperes. But if the stator current is 80 kA, then the setting will be increased to above 0.8 amperes. So for any external fault, if the fault current is 80 kA, the relay will not operate as the relay set value is increased above 0.8 ampere. Now let's watch how the restraining coil works. The purpose of the restraining coil is to balance the plunger in external fault conditions. For this, we will send the average of both CT secondary current, or simply I1 plus I2 by 2 to the restraining coil. For external fault, the restraining current will be very high and the current through the operating coil will be very low, as both the CTs will sense the same current. This will make the plunger attract towards the restraining coil, and this position ensures that it does not make trip contact. For internal faults, the current through the operating coil will be higher than the current through the restraining coil, as one CT will sense a higher current, and another will sense a lower current. This will cause the plunger to attract towards the operating coil and make the trip contacts. This is the concept of the bias differential and percentage differential protection. If we plot the restraining current and differential current, this green zone will be the safe zone. For any value of restraining current and differential current within this zone, the differential relay will not operate. But outside this zone, the relay will sense that there is a fault in the stator winding and the relay will close the trip contact. We can change the slope by changing the turns of the restraining coil. That's the story of the electromechanical relay. Now let's understand how the numerical relay works. The working principle is the same. It is more simple. Here all the CT cables are connected at specified terminals. We only need to provide the curve details. It will calculate the required setting according to the current value. For this, we will provide the values of IS1, K1, and IS2, K2. IS1 is the differential current, which will be set at 0.5 ampere as previously mentioned. K1 is the slope, which will be set at 20%. To prevent tripping due to external faults, the slope of the relay needs to be increased. As the value of restraining current reaches 5.5 ampere, the slope will be 70%. Nowadays, the numerical relay is used everywhere. The understanding of this relay is also simple. To visualize the shape of this curve, 
it will be easier to understand the concept of the electromechanical relay first. I hope you understand the concept of generator differential protection, when it should operate or when not. If you have any queries, feel free to comment below. If you found this explanation helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel for more in-depth videos on electrical engineering. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your colleagues and friends. Your support helps us create more valuable content for you. Thank you for watching.